Hey guys, it's Mrs. Crosswhite. So we're gonna get started with what we're gonna be doing this week. This week's gonna be a lot about color. So we're gonna talk about how to mix colors, where colors come from, how we make them, how we group them. And what's also gonna happen is we're going to be making a color wheel. Color wheels, as you guys know, are these big wheels with colors all around them. And people always kind of wonder what they're for. And what they're for is artists use them to pick colors and to visualize how they go together. So what colors they can use with which, what colors they might need to mix to get a certain color. So we're gonna be making our own. Now, the things you're gonna need is your sketchbook. I'm gonna be using watercolors. So let's talk about this for a second. Watercolor is preferable. If you don't have this, you can just substitute colored pencils, okay? So if while I'm doing the demonstration, all you have to do is follow along with colored pencils that are the same color, and that's fine. Just make a note when you submit the assignment that you just didn't have it. Another option is if you have like craft paint at home, you can do the same thing. You would just follow along with the colors that I'm mixing. So you would just make sure you have all the colors that I have. And you're gonna need paint brushes and a little bit of water, your sketchbook, a marker and a pencil, and something circular to trace. So we're gonna go ahead and get started. If you wanna pause and get your materials, go ahead and do that now. So in your sketchbook, what you're gonna do is, first you have to find something circular to trace in your house. So for example, I'm just using a cereal bowl. You don't want it to be too big because if it's too big, it's gonna be kind of hard to fit all the colors in. So I'm gonna take my bowl, and I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna trace it with my pencil. So I now have a circle and that's it. What's gonna happen next is we have to start putting in the colors. So if you remember from being a little kid, there are three primary colors, red, yellow, and blue. The primary colors give you the option to mix all the other colors of the color wheel. So what I'm gonna have you do is I'm gonna ask you to on your circle, draw three small circles. You don't want them to be too big and you want them about a third of the way apart. And they don't have to be perfect circles. Now, if you wanna find something that's circular and trace it, that's fine, but they don't have to be. So it's like 12 o'clock, four o'clock, and eight o'clock. So they're about a third of the way apart. And I'm gonna go ahead and erase this little bit on the inside. And we are actually gonna put our three primary colors on our wheel right now. So like I said, if you don't have paint, go ahead and just use colored pencils. So one of our primary colors that we're gonna put at the 12 o'clock is red. So what I'm gonna do, and again, remember, you can substitute the watercolor paint, is put the red at the 12 o'clock. The 12 o'clock is the top one. And then, at the four o'clock, I'm gonna make sure my brush is really clean because I want pure yellow. I'm gonna put yellow. And then at the eight o'clock, I'm gonna put my blue. Again, if you have to, use colored pencils. Now, these three colors are really, really important because like I said, once you start mixing them, you get all the other colors that fill in your color wheel. So you guys remember these from, I would hope, from elementary school. These are the primaries. So what I'm gonna do, is above each one of these, I am actually gonna write the word primary or off to the side. So I remember these are my primary colors. These are the colors that come first. Without them, I can't really make the other colors. The next part is gonna be the secondary colors. So what I'm gonna do is, and you might wanna wait for these to dry, Right in the middle of these, I'm gonna draw 
a square. And this, as you can guess, is where your secondary colors are going to go. And they don't have to be perfect squares, guys. They don't have to be super pretty. But you want to get them as close to in the middle of your two as you can. Now, the next part's kind of tricky because if you don't put them in the right location, your color wheel is actually wrong. Now, what is nice about a color wheel is it kind of works like a map. It tells you where certain colors go and why they go there. So, for example, orange. We know orange is a secondary color. I make orange by mixing red and yellow. So, orange wouldn't go over here because that's in between blue and red, and we don't want that. So what we're going to do is we have to put orange in between the two primary colors that make it. So if you want to, you can go actually go ahead and mix your own orange, but if your tray has an orange, go ahead and just use that. So I'm going to use orange. I'm going to make sure it's placed in between red and yellow because I have to mix them to get orange. Now the same thing is gonna apply for the next one. The next secondary color. Blue and yellow make green. And that's my next one. And then of course, the last secondary color is violet. Or you can say purple. Believe it or not, you can actually say either one. Now, this is just a basic color wheel that we probably all remember from being a kid. You've got your primaries and you've got your secondaries. Make sure you label your secondaries as well. So I'm gonna take my marker and label my secondaries. Now here is where we're gonna get into something a little more advanced, which is your tertiary colors. So in between all of these colors, there is yet another color, and that's what we're gonna discuss right now. So what I'm gonna do is in between each one, I'm gonna place a triangle. And these are gonna be And I am smudging up a storm, guys. So make sure you let some of this dry as you're working. I'm going to put a triangle in between each one. So one difference between tertiary colors and, say, primary or secondary colors is that there's six of them. So instead of three, there's actually six colors we need to make now. So this is where things get a little tricky. Now... We have our basic, secondary, and primary, and now we are into tertiary, so the third set of colors. Tertiary starts with TRI, so just like triangle, which is why we're using triangles. So what I'm going to do next is start here with this first tertiary color. I need to mix red and orange to get a new color. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take some red and a little bit of orange. And what I want is I want to mix a color that is an orange but has more red in it than yellow. So it is a slightly darker orange, but it's not quite a pure red. And this color is actually called red orange. And the reason it's called red orange is because there's more red than yellow. And because of that, it is closer to red. So it is not closer to yellow. Now let's talk about this secondary color. It is closer to yellow, which means I'm going to take orange and yellow and mix them together. So I'm going to take a little bit of orange and some yellow and what I want to get is, I want to get a yellow that is darker than yellow, but lighter than the orange. Now, this one's always a little tricky, because sometimes it takes a little extra yellow to do so. But you get your yellow orange. So, 
remember, I hope you're labeling these as you go so you don't get lost. This is gonna be my yellow orange. Now, if you're using color pencils, you can actually layer them and mix them together to make, get these colors. You would just follow along with the same colors that I'm using, just with colored pencils. Now, the next one is going to be a mixture of green and yellow, which is gonna give us a yellow green. So what I want is a light green that is not quite yellow, but it's not quite green. It's my yellow green. And of course it's closer to the yellow, it's closer to the primary color, so it has more yellow than blue, or green in this case. So this is my yellow green. And then the next one is going to be a mixture of blue and green. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take blue and green. And the color I will be getting is a bluish green, which is actually my favorite color. So it's a little bit lighter than the blue, but it's darker than that green. And there is my blue green. And we're almost done. Then these last two are going to be our violets. So the next color, if I look at this empty triangle, it's in between purple and blue. So I'm going to mix purple and blue to get a bluish violet. That's actually what it's called. It's called blue violet. So I'm going to take purple and blue and mix them together. And what I'll end up with is what some people traditionally called indigo. And there is my blue violet. And then our last one is in between purple and red. So I'm going to take purple and red and mix them together to get a red violet. And that one I will label red violet. Trying not to smudge my uh, paint there. So this is your completed color wheel. So at the bottom, because I actually have more room at the bottom than I do at the top, but you can title it at the top. You're gonna title this color wheel. And in the next step, I'm gonna show you how to map out your color wheel a little bit better. but. We are going to stop right here and let this portion of our sketchbook page dry. If you used colored pencil, go ahead and just go right to the next video. If you need to let yours dry, give it a couple minutes and then come back to the next slide. I'll see you guys in a minute.